Hello and welcome to this ISMSurf Basics tutorial number two, Utilities. We're going to start with the list command. Lists are a little bit like layers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a new list. Let's call it Hauber. Now I'm going to copy some geometry into my list Halber. I'm going to use the surface shortcut, which is F. So I'm not copying the geometry, I'm just moving it into the list Halber. Now I can see at the top of the screen, I've got some tabs. If I go back to DB list, this is the list which has got everything in it. And I can make a new list uh, by just pressing the plus. So let's make a list for the wheels. To add things to the wheels list, I can right click on the tab and just like before, I can select my geometry. So here I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut for part and the part includes the tires and the rims. I can also make what we call a detail list. This is a temporary list. I'm just going to pick on these two faces here. And once I approve the selection, here is my temporary list. It's uh, shown with a little minus sign at the end of the name of the list it came from. And if I change to another list, it automatically removes my detail list. Let's make uh, another list for the full exterior. So I did right click list copy and this time I'm going to use the material filter. So if I just push the M, everything within the, the same material where I clicked will get selected and copied immediately to the new list. Moving on to the view command. What we do is we position the model in a nice view that we like and we hit save and let's call it view A. And then let's make another view. I'm going to hit save and let's call this view B. And now the model is oriented to that view when I pick it from the list. We can also access the views from this drop down over here on the right. Works in the same way. And notice below the view menu we have the split buttons with the, the view is on the left hand side of the button. So that's the side view, the top view, the front view and the rear view. The right hand side of the split buttons sets the active plane. Now, let me switch on my plane symbol, which I get from the display options menu. There it is. Turn the model a little bit so you can see it. And if I click on the right hand side of these buttons, you'll see that the corresponding plane to the view we mentioned is displayed. I can also access the display plane from the, the plane menu. You see it's a bit like the view menu with a list of the, the names and here I can switch the symbol off and on. I can click on the plane and drag it out along the main axes. I can also rotate it. I can now save this plane and it's added to the list. just like views, depending on which one I pick, that's my active plane. We can define planes also by clicking on geometry. So here I've got normal selected. So if I click onto a patch, you'll see that wherever I pick, the normal is taken and that sets the position and orientation of the plane. I can also pick a linear entity like a curve, and then it's normal to that curve. Attachment point controls where it is without changing the orientation. 
Now coming to the move command, the most flexible one is dynamic move. So you simply pick the geometry that you wish to move. And then we get this robot. Uh, we can switch on and off the options we want. So I've left on translate and invert. I've disabled rotate and scale, but here's rotate. I can click on the little yellow balls and rotate around the principal axes. I can also add to my selection just by hitting the plus. And there's a duplicate option. So with that on, every time you make a move, it makes a duplicate of the selected geometry. Now we have dedicated move functions like translate. What you need to know about translate is you need to pick your geometry. We also have the duplicate function, but first you need to define your direction with the X, Y, Z and the distance. So here we're moving 180 mil in the Y direction. We can also define the vector much like we do with the plane. So here we're saying tangent to the curve. We can also define the length here. And there with duplicate on, we've now uh, made a duplicate of that patch. I've hit to undo with the middle mouse button, but you can dynamically control this vector and invert it just by using the, the graphical user interface. So the little, the little handles on the vector. Here we have a count function. So this is giving us a count of 10 duplicates in the, uh, the vector direction. With the middle mouse button, I also have the undo function. Moving on to rotate. So with rotate, you need to define an axis about which you want to rotate. Again, it works in a similar way. So you can pick a, an axis by a normal, like this. And that's my axis of rotation. You define how, in, ang in degrees, how far you wish to rotate. So 10 degrees. And again, there's the count function. Let's go for 15. There we go. I can control the axis just by clicking on the X, Y, Z buttons. And again, specifying that important attachment point. Moving on to color now, not to be confused with material, color is literally the, uh, the color of the wireframe entities. So the curves are blue and the surfaces edges are green and the control points are orange in this case. We reach the colors menu from the display menu uh, or also with the control F shortcut. F stands for Farbe, which is the German word for color. So I can pick a color from the palette and then I get my uh, selection menu. So I can pick multiple things. And here you see I've made uh, some patches and a curve purple. I can pick another one and assign to some different uh, objects. Okay, so I've assigned a few different ones. What I can also do is rather than pick it from the palette, I can actually pick from the graphics window and that selects it for me. It's useful to use keyboard shortcuts when we're making a selection. So here I can hold down the P key and I will only pick patches if I'm pulling a window in my graphics area. So I'm going to assign to just patches. Watch out for more Isom Surf videos coming soon.